fact that 2012, the date in 2012, is close to 2014 is, is completely a coincidence. This up and coming solar cycle, roughly 2014, is not really going to be significantly different than the next one, than the next one, and then the previous one. The sun is what we call an active star, and it has a cycle of activity. Over 11 years, we go to higher activity and back down to lower activity. And so this 11 years is fairly steady, and it's been happening through time as far as we can tell. And we always have solar flares. Sometimes we have big ones, sometimes we have small ones. We live on a planet with a very thick atmosphere. And so that atmosphere stops all of the harmful radiation that is produced in a solar flare. Even in the largest events that we've seen over the past 10,000 years, uh, we see that the effect is not enough to damage the atmosphere such that we are no longer protected. Coronal mass ejections are happening on the sun all the time, and they hit the Earth once or twice a week, sometimes more, and in general, the, the effects are minimal. If we have a really big one, you can have a very strong aurora, but then it can affect satellites and power grids, and so these are the kind of things that people who run these systems know about. And we have warning. These CMEs travel at speeds that mean that they take probably two to three days to get here. We've learned more and more about storms. We've learned how to better predict the effects, where they're going to go, what, where, where they're going to hit. As long as we continue paying attention to it and learning more about it and um, treating it like we treat a hurricane coming or uh, a huge thunderstorm coming, we can take appropriate measures to prepare for them. We understand the sun well enough with all of the technology and all the science and all of the many spacecraft that we have that are monitoring it 24 hours a day, seven days a week, to know that this super storm that's going to wipe out the Earth simply isn't going to happen.